And good evening, everyone. Mike Flanagan here with the great Tom Carter for the <laughs> PBA 50 Florida Blue Medicare National Championship here at the Villages. Man, this is going to be a great night, our first major of the season. A major with a bunch of Hall of Famers in the finals. This yeah. is going to be a great tournament. Yeah, who do we have here tonight for us? Starting out on the opening match, Pete Weber and Jason Couch. Really? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, it's going to be an unbelievable one there in that first match. And whoever comes out of that one has to take on Troy Lint. Yeah, and Troy is a newcomer. He's, he's been around. He bowls. Wait till you see this style. It's something that I'm sure you guys have been talking about. But this guy's got an incredible arm swing, and he's got a chance. I mean, he basically led most of this tournament. Yeah, and he actually uh, is eligible for Rookie of the Year. And Craig Elliott, who is our third person of our broadcast team, will be joining us talking about that in just a little bit. The winner of that match will go on to take on Brad Angelo. Who just won last week. And, and Brad Angelo, back back. this last round, might have averaged 260-plus with a 300 and a couple 279s and a 259. The guy is on fire. And then our top seed, of course, is Parker Bone III. He's been on fire this entire tournament. Parker is throwing it incredible. He's, uh, he's on a mission. Uh, he's got a great look. Uh, it's going to be a great show because it's a toss-up. It really is because all these guys are striking a ton. Craig Elliott is standing by, I believe. Craig, you got a copy? Yeah, I do. I can hear loud and clear down here. We got Brad Anslow and Troy Linton just warming up, getting ready for their chance at these uh, these Hall of Famers here in the step out of final today. Craig, you, you've been on the call all week here with me and Brian, and Tom Carter joins us now. What do you think about tonight's show? Well, you know, Pete, defending champion, um, five hours ago we thought he had zero chance of making the step ladder, and somehow here he is, the five seed, and of course you can't count him out to run the ladder. But he's got some Hall of Famers to go through. Last week's champion, Brad Angelo, and newcomer, we talked about a little bit, and we'll talk about some more in Troy Lint, who's been bowling fantastic all day long, all tournament long. Pete Weber did a great job getting to the show. He beat Walter Ray, who was in fifth, to make it to the show. 247 over 186. He had to beat him by 27 pins, I believe, to get to the show. And so Pete's, uh, you could tell it in that last match, he had the fire going on. Yeah, absolutely. John Weber making all the announcements down there. Of course, there's a bunch of them here. We got some great sponsors here, as he's mentioning right now. Florida Blue Medicare, Spanish Springs Lanes. We want to thank Larry and Sue Ducat and their son, Brian. 43 PBA national tournaments that they have hosted so far. Unbelievable. You love coming here, don't you? This, this is one of the best places that we come. The crowd is incredible. It's like standing room only. It's almost impossible to get from one lane to another with your equipment because there's so many spectators. They had almost 300 entries in the Pro-Am tournament, which was absolutely phenomenal. Craig, we got a question for you already in the chat. Uh, Chuck Ritchie wants to know, did any of the players change clothes for the finals? I know that was a big deal to you earlier. You know, I, I think Brad Angelo did. I was wrong earlier. Because, Jason Couch did. Yeah, Jason Couch <laughs> did. He put on his money green shirt there. And uh, Brian LeClaire actually changed the last round. I missed that, so my apologies to that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a great time here at the Villages. What a unique community this is. If, this, if you've never been here before, it is incredible. There are so many places to go. Everybody with all these tricked out golf carts <laughs> all over the place you can go to the town square at night there's music uh there's cocktails it's uh as one lady told me in the pro-am she goes it's a party every day okay, it really we is are ready to start the opening match of the florida blue medicare pba 50 national championship here at spanish springs Plains. pete weber and jason couch pete's won 37 times on the pba tour Ten, ten of those titles were majors, five times the U.S. Open champion. PBA and USBC Hall of Famer Pete Weber is going to start the match. And Jason Couch from Claremont, Florida, he's won 16 times on the PBA Tour. I'm sure you all saw his three-peat at the Tournament of Champions. PBA and USBC Hall of Famer Jason Couch, everybody. It's a great match. Guys, good luck. This yeah. is going to be an incredible match. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Yeah. 
Pete's going to get things started here on the left lane. Couch was the higher seed, so he had lane choice. Pete, if I'm looking over there and I can see, he is actually going to start with a fast pitch. Yeah, urethane, he did that a little bit in qualifying. Yeah, the first round of match play, he used a fast pitch. Yeah, you are correct, sir. This pattern that we played on was kind of unique. and You had to play outside to begin with, and a lot of the guys at one particular round, uh, as we were going through doing our ball rep, and there were 48 urethane balls on the rack. So a lot of guys were throwing urethane in this tournament. Pete, the defending champion here at the Villages. Last year's pattern was six feet longer in length. Hey, talking with ball rep for Storm Kelly oh, Cuba, Pete's got 500 surface on that fast pitch as well. 500 yeah. surface, and he misses the 610 Ten. completely. Yeah, that ball checked in the mids and missed. And that was something about this pattern, it being 38 feet. It, you needed the ball to shape up really early. You couldn't get it down clear to the break point like you would normally do in, say, like your league shot. If the ball, you could get that thing to hook up early and set, your carry was way better. Jason throwing a double cross. Jason worked on his style a lot because he used to have such a steep, steep backswing, and it was almost like a check mark at the point of release, and he worked on having that flat spot, getting that ball into the lane and out on the lane a little bit different, and that's been a huge success to him. Jason lives just about an hour away. I was actually at his house last Saturday night for a little barbecue. Dave Watka's staying with him. Dave Watka spent some time in the booth with us here this week. We certainly do appreciate the players coming in and spending time with us, giving their analysis, as well as you here tonight, Tom. Thanks so much. Oh, enjoy being here. Jason with that unique kind of lean back style, high back swing. But throwing your thing to the outside, and that's what a lot of the left side did on this shorter pattern. Yeah, Jason's two ball choice is that double cross at 1,000, and then if that doesn't work, he's got a purple hammer at 500 ready to go. Well, Pete had a couple ball choices. In that final match against Walter, he used an uh, altered reality. But on the fresh, he's been using that fast pitch and a phase four. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Pete actually slowed down his speed, I think, on this pattern to get the ball around the corner because just to get it to shape, because if you threw it firm enough on the right side, it actually just kind of hydroplaned and went straight, and you thought it was going to hook and never did. So in that match against Walder, I was watching the speeds, and I don't know if they're correct or not but he was consistently at 13.39. Pretty consistent. Pete looks a little tentative here tonight. I mean, flag and despair, that's very uncharacteristic of Pete. And of course, that well, he, shot there wasn't his best either. Well, he could try to be a little bit too soft. You know, now they're bowling on the fresh. And this afternoon, these last eight games, were on the burn. They bowled on the fresh this morning, and then they had eight more games on what was left over, which the whole tournament was a no reoil tournament. So we had 18 games on these lanes with no reoil. Nice shot yeah. there by Pete. Yeah. Kind of banking it to the outside, trying to get it out to four or five down lane. Take a look at yeah. that one again. And if you notice, he got that out literally at about 35 feet. And that's exactly where you had to get that ball to shape up. Because if you went down farther than that, it just did not finish. No matter what you did. You could go to a stronger ball, didn't work. Could go to a flippier ball, definitely didn't work. One thing Jason is, he is totally intense. 
I don't think he ever looks up. He throws a shot, looks down at the floor, walks back, and is just in total concentration. That's why you win the Tournament of Champions three times, I guess. Yeah, what's crazy is Pete Weber has 37 regular titles on the national tour, 13 senior titles, 51 regionals. Jason Couch, 16 total titles, one on the senior tour, and 28 regional titles. Like we said earlier, Jason threw a purple hammer also and a double cross. Both of those balls were drilled pinned down so that they just shaped on the back end. They didn't try to overreact on the back end. Oh, cow traps the seven. At one point today, Jason had missed a couple seven pins and he, he was getting pretty lit up. He, he couldn't just get the feel right with that spare ball thrown at a seven pin. Yeah, he actually drilled a new one just the other day. He didn't like what was going on with his other spare ball. This is a new spare ball. It's about three days old here. Well, if he misses this seven pin, I guarantee he's probably drilling another one. He, yeah, he probably will. Hopefully he doesn't here. Whoa. That's a little bit right. I, I don't know if he, he thought that was all that good or not. These might be the two most animated players from each side of the lane that we've ever seen. Obviously, Marshall Holman and some other players come to mind. But Jason Couch, he can really give you the business when he wants to. And you know Pete Weber, <laughs> well, of course. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> and with a crotch chop, yeah, you, you know Pete can get wound up. Well, he actually got wound up in that last match against Walter. He's running him out three lanes with a fist pump. Both players have a tremendous amount of respect for one another. Well, everybody out here does. I mean, it's just, it's, if you're a bowler and you're out here, most of these guys <laughs> you've watched on TV, and if you never got to be on the tour, you know, you're, you're getting to bowl on the pair of lanes with the guys that you've watched your entire life on TV. Pete totally not liking that reaction. No, Just he's, he's not. not. The, the problem I think he might have, you know, if he's trying to shape that ball and he slows it up, it's just it's not going to be Pete Weber. It's not going to be Pete's release. And that's because you're trying to get the ball to hook up early and then just set. Basically, we call a hook set. And if he throws, slows it up too much, it's just it's going to lose too much energy before he hits the pocket. See Troy Lent down there practicing. Yeah, and if you've noticed that, uh, you see that vertical backswing. <laughs> Thing goes straight up in the air. Yeah, it gets really high up there. Reminds me of Weber in the 80s. Not many senior players get their arm up that high. <laughs> All right, the light mixer yeah. there for Pete. Gives him the yeah. business a little bit. That ball made it, but it definitely looked Take a little look lazy on the back end, didn't it? Sure did. He actually it, told us during qualifying that he hates urethane, yet he just bowled 268 at the time when he said that. Well, I told, yeah. I told him he was a Hall of Famer twice, once with urethane, once with resin. He goes, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, you can hate it all you want, but if that's what the lane requires, that's what you need to use. Jason basically playing, you know, that seven eight six seven eight area out to like th three down lane. He literally crosses like six there, takes it out to three. That double cross a little bit stronger than the purple that he's been using. But as the evening goes on, depending on who wins this match, if he wins, he might be changing the shape. <laughs> you, you see Pete <laughs> sitting down there following through up the back of the ball. Mm -hmm. Get that ball into a heavy roll. Yeah. Ah, light mixer. Hey guys, we got Troy Lynn down here getting ready for his match coming up. Troy, we watched the ball all day. You've seen pretty calm. 
getting ready for your first step letter here on the national tour. You stand here and look at those banners down there. What's going through your mind? Those are all great bowlers. <laughs> Just got to compete against all of them. Nothing else I can do. <laughs> Just bowl. How, how are you going to handle the nerves? Same as all week. Just going to go do my job. All right. Good luck today. Thank you, Craig. Obviously, Troy is the least decorated bowler in our top five here tonight. Oh, yeah. Pete doesn't really believe that that ball's not finishing. He's like, I can't believe that's not checking up. But Pete is a crowd <laughs> favorite here, that is for sure. Yeah, the crowd yelling at Pete, trying to get him to get fired up. I think they want to see a little animation out of him. Weber can max at 248 through six frames. Jason Couch can max, of course, at 279 with just the one miss in there, the one seven pin. You know, back to that first frame of pizza, that was just totally not Pete Weber missing a 610, totally. That ball was in a little bit. He didn't get that near as far out. That crossed like 12. At the arrows, only out to about seven, eight. He kept that much tighter down lane. Well, that was <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, that was really good, but that was a lot different than his last shot. He never got out near as far down lane as his previous shot. But it was definitely flush in the pocket. Earlier today, we, we kind of filmed Jason, he, two comparison shots when he was striking a lot and when he wasn't. And, and you can see the ball was getting in the lane too quick instead of out on the lane. And he's seen that, and things clicked, and he started putting some numbers up. Yeah, Watka was talking to us about trail leg down is when Jason makes a good shot. When he gets that trail leg up and kind of steps out of it, gets the ball going a little too quick into the swing is when we see him gas it a little bit, maybe come in a little bit light. He's done that a few times throughout the week. That's pretty good. Oh, another... Light hit, but got the benefit of it. Well, Jason's trail leg has always been up. It just depends on how up it gets. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of like Walter Ray's trail leg. It's always been way up in the air. Pete here in a must-strike situation here in the eighth and the ninth. Again, 246 or 248 left for Weber. Sheet for 248, Jason going at a 279 pace. That was in also, I think, compared to, it was like his last shot that he got in a little bit and it flushed up, but this one just never drove. I think he was hoping for a little kick there and didn't get it. Easy spare for Pete. Max score now at 227 for Pete, which pretty much is going to be an evening for Pete. He got around that, that one, one pretty good. Yeah, and he got that farther to the right, and he, the ball got more drive. That Faced up yeah, nicely. Yeah, the, the shot previously, it was in. And you see Pete telling Jason, come on, make a good one here. Again, the camaraderie yeah. out here is pretty incredible. Well, I, it's the, you know, guys go, well, it's, it's a senior tour, and it is. I mean, these guys bowl their whole life for a living. Unfortunately, 
we don't bowl for a lot of money out here, but we do bowl for a fair amount. And it's not so much about the money. It's always about the title. Any one more title is, you know, it's bragging rights. And especially on this one, since it's a major. Jason didn't like that at all. Yeah, right at target on that one. Certainly not what he was looking to do there. No, he walked away from that before it ever got down the lane. He still shoot 257. He's pretty much got this uh, game in hand. Shout out to all of you in the chat here tonight watching our finals. See some celebrities in there. Too many to name. You know who you are. Thanks for tuning in. Whoa. Almost chopped the 4-7, but he got it. Walked away with it. So the max score now, 257 for Couch, Weber 227. Jason just needs to, a mark would be really helpful right here. That would lock the whole situation up for him. I think he might like to get a fill ball, have a taste of something else. I, and I'd be surprised if he doesn't change balls in the fill. Seven pin. Again, if you're, just, if you're just joining us, uh, coming up in the next match, we'll have Troy Lent. He's a rookie making his very first telecast. He's been steady all week, averaging 230. And Brad Angelo is our number two seed. He won last week, looking to repeat and go back to back. 231 average coming in. And Parker Bone, the third, our top seed, 232.17 average. <laughs> Pete's going to fast track through here. Yeah. yeah, Pete knows it's over. Jason. If he strikes 246, Pete 227. And Jason did throw the purple hammer on that fill shot just to see what he's got. Pete had a great tournament. He didn't like he, Craig said earlier, we didn't think Pete was going to make the show, and he came out of nowhere to end up in fifth. So he ended up having a great tournament. And like you said, he is a crowd favorite. The crowd was going nuts when he started striking. Absolutely. Finishes fifth here at this year's PBA 50 Florida Blue Medicare National Championship here at the okay. Villages. Coming on board, he'll get eight shots, and we'll get match number two underway for you. Troy Lent coming on board. Troy taking his shots there. And it's going to be an interesting match here because Troy has lit him up this whole week. And just an amazing arm swing and release. And it's effortless, too. Yeah, he most certainly has. And, you know, Brad Angelo now is, is the great right hope uh, with – Couch and Lint being southpaws and Parker, our top seed. Brad Angelo, the righty that's left. Well, <clears throat> Brad's got the hot hand. You know, coming in, if he happens to win this tournament, he was telling me on the way to the tournament last week in Fort Myers, he had already won three tournaments on his way down to Fort Myers. Wins Fort Myers. That was his fourth tournament in a row. And if he wins this one, that'll be five wins in a row for Brad <coughs> Angelo. And then back-to-back PBA 50 titles. That would be absolutely incredible to put on your resume. That sure would be incredible. Yeah, Brad's very aware that he's the only ready now. He was watching every shot Pete threw, trying to make the right ball choices. He's got three different Pro 10 physics, and depending on what Pete did and where he was at, is going to determine which one of those three that he goes down there and throws in his match. Well, Brad told me that he used on the fresh. That's what he basically used on the fresh was a Pro 10 physics. But he's got a few other balls in his, his bag, he's got a Phase 4, a Zen, an RST2, and an Altered Reality. So he's got options. Week number two here for us on the PBA 50 Tour, new here on Bowl TV this year. It's a great opportunity to watch more bowling here on Bowl TV. And we were talking just before 
the stepladder tonight, Tom, about all the other great action that's available here on Bowl TV. PW, right. PWBA was asked. is coming yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Collegiate events, junior gold. By the way, I yeah. failed to mention. So we got the PWBA. BBA. <laughs> yep. Get that out here in a minute. It's coming up. <laughs> and uh, junior gold, all the intercollegiate action. And now we got the PBA 50. So there's four venues right now. Uh, if you're into watching lots of bowling, you're going to have lots to watch. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean. An honor and a privilege to be out here on the PBA 50 tour. Next week, where do we head, Tom? We are nine hours away by the motorhome in Aberdeen, North You're going Carolina. pretty quick for nine hours in that thing. It says eight hours and 19 minutes. But, uh, well, Tom, Tom, let's be honest here. When is the last time the motorhome made a trip without breaking down? Would you? I oh, can't no. even believe you said that. <laughs> it's uh, if you black cat me, Craig. <laughs> so it, it's nine uh, nine hours and thirty minutes. I was broke down in uh, Rawlings, Wyoming, for twelve days. Now, there's not the place you want to be broke. I down was for. stranded there in a snowstorm once. <laughs> we got a lot in common, way, way more than I thought we did. Oh my God! No, so yeah, it's nine hours away, Aberdeen, North Carolina. This will be our second time there. Uh, what a great facility that is. Those people are absolutely awesome. We're going to be bowling on a, I think, the Billy Hardwick 44-foot pattern. All right. Out there. So the, that, that, is that the, the PBA 50 version of Shark? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. All right. We'll go with that one. Craig, what are you seeing from out and about down where you are? You're down lane level. I'm seeing a lot of fans here in this bowling center. I tried to count, get a rough idea, and, and I lost count really, really quick. Just trying to move in this bowling center is amazing. 32 lanes. We got bleachers all the way across. They were packed all the way to the top. People standing behind bleachers trying to see. And if you stood in the little walkway here, <laughs> you were politely asked to move because people couldn't see behind you. It's, And this is a one of the best places that you know that we come because all of these people watched bowling from the get-go when Nelson Burton Jr. and Chris Schinkel were there. They uh, they they love bowling. Bowling's big in the villages. Bowling's really big. We just had a little Hall of Fame induction ceremony here for the villages right before our show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for match number two. Troy Lent coming on from Blandon, PA, and he has elected to start the match on the left lane. Troy's won four times on the PBA Regional Tour, looking for PBA 50 Tour title number one. Let's give the players another nice round of applause to start them off. Pass the ball. First time bowling for a national. We'll see how the pressure handles him or he handles the pressure. Yeah, I didn't know Troy before I came into this event, but I had a chance to spend quite a bit of time with him. We were laughing about some comments that happened up here in the booth. He spent a lot of time up here by us. And I have a little bit more on Troy as the match goes on. Real high backswing. Oh, not the way he wanted to start his match, but uh, you know, it could be nerves. Got that a little bit farther to the left. The ball just checked up way too soon. Looked like it read a little earlier than what I've seen throughout yeah, all well, the match play. Well, for the most part, the times I was watching him in all the matches, he was playing a little straighter through the mid part of the lane. This one he leaked out to the left a little farther. You know, what's amazing about his swing, it, as high as it is, and all the people in the back here I think are all kind of gaga at how's he get his arm up that high. Uh, but when you really watch Troy, he doesn't, the ball swings his arm for the most part. He just swings it. It just happens to go that high, and it swings down. It's not like he pulls down and tries to muscle the devil out of the ball. So Jason Couch continuing to cruise right along here, trying to run the ladder here tonight. Well, obviously things might change because we have now we have two lefties, you know, playing the same side. One of them throwing a purple, one of them throwing a double cross. And when Parker gets up here, uh, he's been throwing a lot of purples this week. So, I mean, oil's going to transition. I, that could make some of the players try to have to go around it, or either move to the outside of it. So, 
as the matches go on, uh, I think ball motion and ball reaction is going to change some. Couch in the athletic stance always has been his entire career. Means knees bent. All the greats in all the sports have always done that. You know, oh, 7 10 split. Oh. Well, again, we got two sets of your thing going down, and there could be a little bit of carry down. There, there's something's going to happen. Your break point's going to change. I think, Jason, when you, you mentioned his athletic stance, I think uh, in the years past, he was actually even a little more rocked back than he is right now. But he, he, well, he used to look like he was really just kind of leaning backwards and just jammed on it. We had a 7-10 pickup today. We, we, had, we had two of them picked up this week. Oh. Dave Wadka, Pete Weber both picked them up. We may have had another one. I just missed it. Yeah. We almost had, Paul Kaler almost picked it Oh, he, Paul, for, for 30 he, bonus. Yeah, he, he bounced it out in front of the seven. That was kind of amazing. So I want to talk about Troy here. He's from the Northeast, and um, when I was talking to him, I didn't realize we had a mutual friend in Shea Bittenbender from the St. Louis area who's actually from the Northeast, and Shea's best friend was Michael Marcus, who passed away way too early. Well, when Shea couldn't bowl with Michael, Troy Lent was his doubles partner. So I know if uh, Troy were to win here tonight, uh, this one would be for Michael. Mm -hmm. And to add a little bit to that, talking to Troy before this match, uh, Michael's the reason he joined the PBA. So he said he, w he wouldn't have us four regional titles if it wasn't for Mike Marcus. Wow. See, that, that shot there, he didn't leak it near as far out to the out of bounds. Uh, and that's how he played it most of the week. Kept it a lot tighter with good speed. He's been throwing it right around with that backswing, 16 and a half. It's not like he throws it hard, but he can throw it like 24 when he wants to fire it down the lane. In his bag, he's got three purple hammers. Two pin ups and one pin down. It appears that that left lane has a little bit of a hang spot to the outside. Might be why he's going, went up at him at the first shot and went high potentially. It could, I mean, or he could be switching balls here. From here, and it looked a little, looked a little firm to me. I don't know if the first shot he was a little soft with it, but that one looked a little firm. And he's had pretty high ball speed here tonight, but or throughout the tournament, I should say. And that was 16.8 according to the monitor. <laughs> Well, when you're bowling for a national title, trying to get by a Hall of Famer, uh, the adrenaline might be a little bit amped. And when you're just bowling match play, you kind of get in a rhythm and, and a groove. And now you know, when you're throwing it for all the marbles, adrenaline plays a huge factor. Breathing is a huge factor, trying to just stay calm because you only got 10 shots. And they go by extremely fast. Both players experiencing some transition here now is what I see. Yeah, that ball just checked up way too soon for him. He leaves a 7-10 on the previous shot. He might have got a hair slower on this one, and that ball just checked and went right through the face. Hey, Mike and Tom, watching that shot from the side here, uh, I, I conferred with Jeff Johnson. We both saw the same thing from... Troy Lent, he got that ball really high in the backswing, and, and I saw Troy even kind of look this direction. It just kind of turned his, turned his whole eye level on that. Oh! And almost another big split conversion. Also, just during the <laughs> practice before this match, Troy's thumb started to rip open. Oh, really? So he's, he's fighting that as well. Oh, his, his thumb is mincemeat, Troy's. And he says that that happens when he throws uh, for seven pins because he throws it so hard. The back of his thumb looked like hamburger. Well, Lint has the lead right now. It's kind of like a slugfest right now. <laughs> Open strikes bear, and he's got a lead. He's got to be feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, Jason strikes and oh, split, split. 
the pace of this match is going to slow down drastically. Yep, you nailed it on the head right there, Tom. Oh, got a little love tap. He switched balls. He went to the purple on the left lane. There we go. Just trying to play it down that six, seven, eight area. Just down the lane, not give the ball away too much. And Jason threw that one like 16.8. So that seems to be the going ball speed on the left side right now. See if he can settle down here. Beautiful was, shot. Yeah, that was dead flush. You know, he is so smooth with that high backswing. It just, it's it's rhythm. I and mean, you watch him, it's just arc up, arc down. It's not like he's trying to throw it through the back of the building just because his swing is so high. It's just, it's what he does. Not that I recommend anybody at home listening <laughs> go try to get your swing up over your head because <laughs> that might throw your timing a little off. That's natural for him. That left lane is... Uh, giving them a little bit of a fit. Yeah, so he comes in high twice now, light once as well. So they have an option, depending on what was thrown on that lane, either to move farther left, which it probably is not going to be, I think, the right idea. They can move farther right and try to go around the pattern and try to get away from that spot, but they'd have to do it with a bigger ball. Troy Lent was 13, 11, and 0 in match play, 390 bonus pins. Jason Couch, 15, 7, and 2, 480 bonus pins. Couch, your four seed, averaged 226.57 on his way to the show. Troy Lent averaged 230.83. Those are just amazing numbers. 18 games of qualifying, <laughs> an advancer's round of five, five, and 24 games of match play. Yeah, 47 games in. Ooh. That's a, oh, ooh. baby. That's over half a league season in one week. That is, that, that is, I didn't realize that. That is a half a league season. <laughs> and you wonder why they get good. Yeah, well, you bowl a half a league in one week. See what happens. This crowd's starting to get behind Jason Couch now. Don't forget we got Brad Angelo coming up in the next match. And we've had Parker Bone, who's just about led this thing wire to wire. Brad shooting 300 and 2279s. He was just on fire the last eight games. Oh, -ho! rolls out the seven pin. That ball. There's got to be a hang spot because that was really light, but he's getting a messenger out of it. Yeah, so if you're Troy Lent here, you know, you got you to calm the nerves. you you got to be thinking about, okay, Couch is getting some breaks. I'm bowling against this Hall of Famer. Now it's time to just loosen up the arm swing and get things in a state yeah. of mind on what got him here. Yeah, he's, he's got his, you know, basically, like you are saying, slow his heart rate down, slow his rhythm down, his, his breathing. He's got the right lane. He's got to figure out the left lane, but he, he's in a kind of a I got a strike situation here. Throws that I, one past the break. That he he's starting. He wiped his forehead. I think he's <clears throat> the adrenaline's going. He's starting to sweat. Uh, he's just got to he's got to breathe. He's getting a little wound up, and this is where experience comes in. Jason yeah, is just you know. He's been here before, obviously, several times. Troy's wanting to win his first title, but he's got to just smooth it out. Oh. 
Uh, chops the spare to boot. <laughs> he is kind of having a little bit of fun here, at least with the crowd. Well, I think you always bowl a little bit better when you have fun because you, you got to. You got to loosen up. And, and at this point, he needs to really loosen up because he's running out of time. Yeah, running out of frames, yeah. running out of time. 216 is the best he can do. So, And with Jason having a three-bagger in the fourth, fifth, and sixth, Jason's kind of like trying to close that door quickly. There he All goes. Right. Yeah. Coming back with a smile like, okay, I got one. But Fat Lady hasn't sung yet, so you just got to – He's got to stay in the match. You know, he's got to put some pressure back onto Jason. Yeah, 216 is a max for Lent. 245 for Couch. Couch didn't get off to a great start there in the second and the third. It's not like he's knocking them all down 10 back. He's getting messengers. Yeah, he's gotten two messengers. And it's it's not like you said, he's, he's, he's not dead flush. It's not like he's totally lined up, but he's getting some breaks. That was almost a 6-8. Hey, guys, we got Brad Angela down here getting ready for the next match. Brad, uh, a win last week, a chance to ball for major this week. I heard you won a couple times on the way here. You're on a bit of a heater. What do you attribute that to? Uh, bowl you. <laughs> Nothing else to say about it. Bowl you. The, my eyes are trained to see. Uh, I'm very observant. I recognize things very quickly. And, you know, fortunately, I've been able to execute that which what I'm seeing and attempting to try to do. So things are going pretty good so far. Hey, I'm sitting here watching this, this match, and I'm kind of observing as well. Your banner's down there, and it's bigger than everybody else's. What's up with that? <laughs> I think the letters well, are I bigger. think <laughs> the new banners are a little bit bigger. Those other three, they've been up there for about 20 more years than me. Right, good luck, Brad. Thanks. <laughs> Very nice from Brad Angelo. Yeah, that, that banner that's up there uh, just off to the right, I'll bring it back up on the screen here. 17 and 18 was going to originally be our championship pair, but we moved one pair to the left due to some ball return issues. We didn't want any more delays today. So the banner's over there, Angelo's banner, brand spanking new. Yeah, it hangs all the way down to the bottom of the masking unit. <laughs> the others are about six inches shorter. <laughs> That was dead flush. Yep, let's watch that one again. Let's pick up on this one. Down and it, through the it, shot. It, yeah, he didn't give that away. It, literally on the left side, not that you want to call it straighter is greater, but straighter through the front and the mid part of the lane and not literally give the ball away and obviously not tug it. Just try to keep it in that tube. And they, they, they got like a four-board tube, it looks like. Just keep it in the tube for around 38 feet and let it do its thing. Oh, how about Troy, that? Troy got a break. There. Come on, Troy. Don't don't shake your head. That was a good one, bud. Take it and on the run. Yeah. Finish this out. 216. You never know what can happen. Yeah, I mean, Couch is going at a 194 pace. 154, 174, 194 when you add 20 pins of a frame, right, right. you know. So Troy Lent not yeah. out of this one yet. Yeah, right now doubles aren't guaranteed. No, not at all. <laughs> this has been his nemesis, this left lane. Actually for both players. Oh, that was just kind of a bad break right there. Seen Brad warming up out there, getting ready for the next match. Hey, watching Brad bowl, and you're going to see it when he gets over here, is just how nonchalant, rhythmic that guy is. Yeah, he mentioned bowl you, and that's that's what he and uh, 
Rick Benoit have been working on for, for several years. It's a teaching practice in which they prepare people for tournaments, and Brad practices what he preaches. He spends a lot of time with the players even during and after the practice sessions teaching those methods, trying to help people get better. He goes all over with those. Yeah, he really does, and uh, what they're doing is working. they got a, a nationals team for the USBC Open Championships that they go out there every single year. They work at it as a team. They communicate the same values and principles of what Bull U is all about, and they have a lot of success out there. So, Well, if you can get everybody th on the same page, thinking the same way, yep. it, that makes a big difference. So many teams go out there and decide that they're going to do their own thing, and that's not the place to do that. Couch here needs to keep it in the pocket, and he calls out a strike yeah. on that one. People are yelling out, green shirt. Green shirt for Couch. Yeah. Well, obviously Jason being a seasoned champion, uh, it's coming down to the pressure situation. He's handled this before on a much bigger stage. So this is just, should be somewhat routine, but I don't know if winning ever becomes routine. Some of these guys just make it look routine. Yeah, they certainly <laughs> do. That was a repeat. You know what one more is, Tom? <laughs> That was a three-bagger. One more, that means this is almost over. I was thinking one more is a three-peat. <laughs> yeah since that's what he's famous for. The three-peat, one of the most famous shots in PBA history when he won the Tournament of Champions three years in a row. That was incredible. I mean, if, if you've never seen it, go archive it, look it up. It was amazing. His swing's getting a lot looser right now. Sure is. He, he, he's falling in a groove. Uh, Troy had a great tournament. And he, he led part of it. He's he just... He, He's an amazing bowler. He's got a unique style and makes it look absolutely effortless. Troy Lent finishes fourth here tonight. <clears throat> Pete Weber finished fifth if you're just joining us. Jason Couch trying to run the ladder tonight. Now he's got Brad Angelo and then Parker Bone the third. Well, Brad, like I said, I've said it a couple times, had the hot hand in the last match play round. And so this is definitely not going to be a gimme match either way. We will not have a new champion tonight. We will have a former champion on the PBA National Tour and the PBA 50 Tour tonight. All three players that are left, all of our finalists, have won on the PBA Regular Tour and PBA 50 okay, Tour. Brad Angelo coming on, and if Parker wants to come on too, he can for four shots. All right, mm -hmm. so the players are going to get in some practice here. We're going to bring over some new players as well. Brad's going to uh, obviously try to break them down with the proton physics. That's what he used on the fresh. And as far as he's concerned, since Pete uh, through your thing for a few shots for his game. It's still fairly fresh. It'll be interesting to see if Brad cho chooses to play him to the right or do what he was very successful at. This pretty much the whole tournament is kind of giving the ball away and he just kind of slow rolled it to that break spot and it just rolled back. He was covering some boards that were pretty much insane, I thought. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go to a, a shot here to really analyze practice. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Let's take a look and see how Angelo and Parker are attacking them with their practice shots. Well, Brad right now is just playing right down 8, 9, 10, just trying to keep it in that tube straight. Yep. Now, whether he is using the proton to actually try to carve a little bit of a, a, hook a path, yeah, a yeah. pathway for him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that he can move into it or if he's going to choose to play it that straight in the match. 
I think it's what you said to begin with. He's trying to carve himself a little spot with the eight shots he gets. That's something that Brad is uh, very good at and very well known for is, is taking advantage of his practice shots to help make things a little better for himself. So it's nice having Craig down by where the players are. He's able to communicate with them throughout the matches and be able to offer some insight on what's going on down there. Certainly do appreciate everything that Craig has done for us, not only here tonight, but also being the voice of the tournament coming on uh, the last two weeks. It's been a pleasure working with Craig and Brian now this week as well. Brian Kane producing for us throughout the week and helping us get set up. And you guys got a lot of stuff to set up. My yeah, Lord. we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, Tom, Tom, I know you kind of snuck out on us last week on cleanup duty. So yeah. <laughs> let's get some gaff tape and stick him in that chair, Mike, before he takes off on us today. Hey, I'm sure at one of these tournaments I'm going to end up having to lower up the motorhome with stuff to take it to the next stop. That's happened before. The, the problem is he, he might – I'll bring it into the booth, Tom – uh, the problem is, I think you might try to stick us to the side of your big. What do you, do you have a Prevost or what? Uh, is, no, what, that, what, what, no, what is it, that thing? It's here? a forty-five foot Allegro bus. Oh, okay. It's oh, Allegro a, bus. bus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a Prevost. Uh, it looks like a Prevost out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I, I mean, mean that's you're made of money. I know you've made great investments over the years. Oh I, yeah. Uh, they okay. told me all about how much money you have. Uh, well, see, As a matter of fact, I, let me pick I, up these hundred dollar bills that <laughs> just fell out of your pocket. <laughs> right yeah, here. I don't. I don't have a house. I live in that full time. You know, there is no house. That is home. So uh, wherever that stops, that's where I'm at. That's why I don't like hearing about this possible breakdown that Craig brought up. <laughs> Oh, Craig's known me long enough. He knows that uh, over the last, uh, see, this is my third motor home. Uh, the first two give me a few problems. Well, I hope you don't have any problems moving forward because that's that would give me that would give me a lot of anxiety. Oh, it it does when they give you the bill. Oh, I bet. Yeah, the, the first one broke down in Vegas, and uh, they told me it was just an injector, and it'd only be about maybe eight hundred bucks. And uh, after they all got done and said, it cost me ten grand. Oh my! <laughs> oh my! And we had to go to the next tournament in uh, Brentwood, California. The bus wasn't done, so we had to rent a. We unhooked the car, rented a U-Haul. Wayne Webb, myself, and my wife uh, took off to Brentwood. We, our friends Charlie and Mary in Vegas, took care of the dogs, <laughs> so we drove to Brentwood. Bold, drove back to Vegas, picked up the motor when it was done, then drove to Kevin Croucher's place in Grants Pass, Oregon for the next stop. Brad taking full advantage of all his practice <coughs> balls there. He looks pretty lined in. I don't know if that's the ball he's going to use or not. I'll tell you what, when we came in on the burn today, Brad moved to that RSTX2. Or RST1, yeah, uh, two, that purple yeah, ball? That purple one. Yeah, that was the one you talked about last week. Yeah, You like the purple ball. I, for whatever reason, <laughs> I just like the way that, that, that is in guys' hands when it matches up. Barnes was using it. Now this week we see Brad Angelo was using it. He bowled 279-300 to start the last two games of match play. That's why I'm so impressed with it. Yeah. I just don't know if he's going to use it here. I don't know if they're going to hook enough. I don't think it'll, uh, it'll be burned up that much. But it, at that point in time, they already had practice on them eight games of match play, and then some more practice for the next round. Yep. So you're looking at they probably had 11, 12 games bowled on those uh, lanes, and that ball just shaped up for him. He could get it through the front part of the lane, hit that, what I call, it, we were calling it a box uh, for our players down there. You actually had a box, like a piece of paper, 8 by 11 piece of paper. If you could get the ball to that box zone at about 38 feet, it was dead flush. It was just hitting the box. I want to give a shout-out to those of you that are in the chat right now. I've been watching and keeping an eye on some of that while we've been up here producing and switching the show and watching the action along with you. Thanks for uh, being part of Bull TV, being a subscriber, watching the greatest players over the age of 50 in the world participate here on the PBA 50 Tour. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for the semifinal match of the PBA 50 Florida Blue Medicare National Championship here at Spanish Springs Lanes. Brad Angelo coming on. He's won on every tour. He's won on the PBA Tour. He just won on the PBA 50 Tour last week in Fort Myers. Of course, he has many regional tour titles. Going for back-to-back -back wins. Brad Angelo, Jason Couch, that's the matchup. Guys, good luck. The question I have is, have they already, have they already shook hands, or did we miss that? 
I think they did that back where we couldn't see them. Okay. There's a question. Why is Parker, Parker practicing? He doesn't bowl till next match. Well, the guys get to come in on the TV pair and get to throw a few shots to see how the lanes break down so they have some kind of idea of what's going to happen when they get to come over here. How about that for a start? That wasn't near the start of his last game. <laughs> no. That, that, that was way more pronounced. Definitely aggressive. I think, uh, not that Jason would have jitters, but he got that first game out of the way, and now he's ready to go. And yeah, Jason trying to run the ladder here tonight. He already took down Pete Weber and Troy Lint. Now draws Angelo. That is about the softest hand that I think you can see on a release if you watch Brad from the front. It just, just floats through the bottom of the release. And you don't see any grab on that at all. If, no. you're, if you're at home and want to practice, practice that. I've been watching <clears throat> Angelo compete on the regular national tour for many years, and he goes through stretches where he's just executing really, really well. In these first two weeks out here, I don't know if I've seen him ever throw the ball any better. Well, he's kind of like fine wine. He's just getting better with age. You watch Brad, he, he, he's trying to keep it in that tube. But he's got a unique style going the line. You see him line up. And I, I always, you know, guys say, well, he's standing on this or standing on that. And as a bowler, I guess I don't care where you stand. I, I'm more concerned on where you finish at the foul line because that's your release point. And he's got such almost a drastic drift. I bet he drifts, you know, if, if you're going down there counting boards, 12 to almost 15 boards. Yeah, he sure does. Another guy that drifts that much that comes to mind is Brian Kretzer. He, 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 he's and a PBA uh, senior player that comes out every now and then. Ted Hannes, he's another one that drifted drastically to the left. I guess that's just the way you see the lane. Yeah, when you do drift left like that, it does help you open up the lane. Jason basically typing it right down the, that tube. Set down point looks like it's, you know, right around 12, getting it out to eight at the arrows. Not much farther than six, five, six down lane. Yeah, not he's like he's trying to curve it a lot. No, he's not, he's not giving that ball much room to go out. I think the most frozen rope we see him throw, this is about as straight as he goes. Bruce Hall, how about Belmo? Yes, Belmo drifts a lot too, but most of the two-handers do. They have to open up their hips a lot because they hook it so much. <laughs> that ball might have had a little more speed on it because it just didn't finish up leaving that uh, kind of like ring seven right there. Here he is again with this new spare ball. I don't think he likes that spare ball. I really don't. Because that thing might be in the parking lot when he leaves. <laughs> well, that'll be a good souvenir for somebody. Covers it, no uh. problem. Two-handers on the PBA 50 tour. Well, we do have one when he does do it, Walter Ray. Walter Ray, Ray yeah. Walter Ray can, and he shot 300 doing it. Uh, he can throw a two-handed, but active full-time two-handers, uh, we don't have any out here right now. That Ricky ball is Schistler, guys. Oh, Ricky Schistler, you're right. 
forgot about that. I forgot that he switched. Ricky Schisler is two-handed. I thought he had a bunch of revs one-handed. I wasn't sure why he switched. When's Tom Carter going to be two-handed? That's never going to happen. You working on that game? Yeah. Have you seen how arthritic I am? You say I've been on this film at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on this film <laughs> you, at one point. <laughs> you, didn't, you don't see my follow-through yeah, going we, up. We did film you. As a matter of fact, Craig, I don't know if you swapped out the film today or not, but we need we need another roll of film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my arms don't go too high, so, you know. Most guys go, are you ever going to follow through? I am. That's what I got. I'm the Stu Williams of the Senior Tour. I got this real short follow through. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Stu Williams of the Senior Tour. <laughs> well, now you just got to get as opinionated as him. <laughs> and become a Patriots fan. So there is a line that I haven't seen Brad play so far in match play Crossing yesterday. Right around day. seven out to about three? Yes. Now, I seen him do that when the lanes opened up and he was left and he, he sl soft rolled it, slow handed it out and let it come back, but not playing straight. He never got it out that far. So, as he said, he, he's trained his eyes. He see whatever he sees is uh, something different than we see from up here. Oh, that was... That looked like that was maybe right off his hand. Yeah, that's what I saw as well. We got folks in the chat also backing up Craig on that one. Don't forget Ricky Schuschler, everybody. Yeah. Matter of fact, <clears throat> Ricky's got to be nice to me. I have, I think, about 3, 6, 9, 12... Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen balls of his that I'm hauling to Aberdeen. <laughs> you carry a lot of balls for the guys week to week? No, no. Oh, so he's he, he gets special treatment. Well, he asked me the other day. He said, "Can you take some stuff?" And I thought, "How many bags?" Because my car is already full. Because I tow the car and it's already packed. He, he looked at the motorhome. He goes, "You sure you got room?" And I go, "I'll get them in the car, but it, it's squatting." <laughs> So we've got a real close match here. Players are clean so far through four frames. Two strikes apiece. Couch with the early double. Yeah. Jason really like that one. Yeah, he's, he's just keeping that ball in line. He's not giving it away. Yeah, I don't think this pattern, especially since there's not as much play on it, you just can't get crazy with it because it's 38 feet. If you miss in, it goes left or right. Uh, and if you swing it too much, there's a huge hang spot. Most of the guys this week threw what we call big balls, a lot of surface to try to slow down that back end. You didn't want to see something go sideways on the back end because you wanted your break point a little bit earlier, which is something It's messenger out to 10. Slow roller. That's a senior messenger. Here it is again. Boom. boom, 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 boom. 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 <laughs> You're just going to stare it down. Hey, do you watch, uh, you, you watch the Rocky movies before? Yeah. Okay. Angelo today, when he fired 300, 279, I was thinking he was Ivan Drago. <laughs> He's like a machine. <laughs> well, Brad definitely with Bull U practices what he preaches, and he bulls the same way. And uh, you got to get. I've never been to a Bull U class, but obviously. I think you and I are both going <clears> to <throat> sign up now. <laughs> we need to. To me, that was a much better shot. He didn't leave that near as far to the right. He didn't get it out down lane as far. That was more on line. Hey, Mike and Tom, I got Parker down here. Parker, uh, you're getting ready to bowl for another major title here on the PBA 50 Tour. You're the third lefty to step later. A lot of your thing going down the lane. How's that uh, 
influence your preparation? Well, I know the lane's going to be tighter on the back end. And uh, when I look at how many games have been bowled, I've got a game plan coming in. I've got two different DV8 collisions. One's going to go a little straighter than the other one. But hopefully one of them will pick up and give me the shape that I'm looking for so that I can walk out a winner. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Two balls for Parker. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, we got a match now, yeah. Tom. Yeah. And the crowd is getting fired up. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> that was almost in my right ear back there. <laughs> I don't know everybody that Couch has here, but his wife Kim is here, as well as his best friend. He's got a bromance with Dave Wadka. I think everybody knows about that. Uh oh. You just said that, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Very good buddies, room together on tour. Both been with the Ebonite brands for 20 plus years. Yeah. That was a great shot right there. Let's go. Let's go. You watch that swing. He, he's got that long follow through now. He's not hitting up on it kind of like he used to. He, that check mark swing that we used to call it. He's actually going through it. Two sixty seven, two sixty nine max scores. Is that how you see it? I, I do. Angelo two pin advantage right now. Through six, that is. Couch yep. does have the hammer up there, which technically gives him the lead. That is twice. He's got some love taps. He's got a little love going on down there. I'm liking the confidence in Brad as well. I, I, he doesn't hoop it up a lot, but when he does, yeah. ooh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled the trigger. He, now he technically has a two-pin lead. Two sixty-nine, two sixty-seven. If we sheet, we had a lot of matches that were close like that today. Oh my goodness. That third and final block of eight games today was literally a strike-a-thon. Yes, it was. That was some of the most exciting action we've seen in a long time. He looks like he's playing both these lanes a little bit different. He's playing the left lane a little bit in, uh, maybe a couple boards compared to the right lane where he's getting it out a little bit farther down lane. But... Obviously, if that's on purpose, that is what's working because he's he, he got those two taps that just knocked out the 10 on that right lane. You know, for 18 games, it's amazing. And you guys watched it, I know, all week. But the lanes held up really good after 18 games and no re-oil. I mean, you, you didn't see any. There was nobody lofting the left gutter. Yeah, no, they really did look good. <laughs> I think it's that absolute control lane conditioner they're using out here. Use it on the regular tour, and they use it out here on the PBA 50 tour, and so far it's worked good. Yeah. Well, we're trading punches right now. Yeah, this is this is Rocky versus Drago, and yeah. I don't know who's who. I'm just going to call <laughs> Angelo Drago just, just because just he's because. like a machine. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is Italian. He would be Rocky, though, wouldn't he? Yeah, it's true. That's a very good point. <laughs> Tom, we should have we should have discussed that in our in our pre-show uh, prep meeting. I'll take notes next time. Yeah. <laughs> Although we could use a rocky scene with uh, trying to get everybody to get along right now with all the stuff that's going on in the world, especially in those parts of the world. A little more time on yeah, this one. I couldn't hear yeah. a peep. No, you could Very deliberate. Yeah, it, it got, like, deathly quiet in here. <laughs> well, Jason's taking it all the way to the ninth. So he, he set himself up in that foundation frame in the ninth. That strike is huge. You know, I know we talked a lot about how big this crowd is, but also how respectful and how educated they are. They understand 
when to make noise, when not to make noise, and, and don't want to interrupt these players. And that's, that's really great to see. It, it really is. And, and where we are right now, Craig, uh, in between the shots, we are hearing a lot of hooting and hollering. I would not think that we are in a, in a senior retirement <laughs> bonanza <laughs> here. And they're excited for these players. Oh, big time, big time. Brad to keep the yeah. lead by two. Oh, oh, that one again. Yeah, he's playing them different. That, that ball's at least another board or two out. And, and it, I was waiting for him to come back and go, hey, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> now you're playing to me, Tom. That's perfect. I was waiting for when you were gonna get off the rails with me. It took it took uh, one week and th two and three quarters games. I love it. This is uh, this is a heck of a match we're watching here. So Brad can step up here in the 10th frame, and he can throw a double and nine to shut out Jason Couch. Anything less than that, Couch can go up and step up and win. If he goes double eight, we have that. Then we have the possibility of a we tie. We have that possibility of a tie, yeah. All of you out there playing Bo Burton bingo, there you go. I tell you what, I don't think anything faces this guy. No. He, he's just dead focused. And when you're talking about the crowd, how respective it is, I mean, they're dead quiet. They shut the, uh, the phones off. I mean, this is it's unbelievable. And as soon as the ball's off their hand, they're screaming. This one and nine. Yep, this one and nine. He's got to have this one. I don't see why he wouldn't. Well, I think the only thing here would be, you know, if he gets it a little in, he's got the possibility of leaving a four pin, four nine, something like that. I don't think we're going to see any sort of split here. I definitely don't think he's going to go light. I think it's impossible for him to go light. Maybe a stuff nine, something like that, run over the rack seven. Other than that, I think Brad advances here. He's going to make a good shot. Time will tell. And down the tube. He Money. just dead flush that. He's not even thinking about it. He just he he answered the call. So, as a bowler, do you make another good shot, or do you throw the high hard one down the middle, and hopefully you get? I think I think where he's playing, you know, he doesn't want to miss right, obviously. But I, I think I think you just you just do what you've been doing. I I don't know what bowl you teaches, but that's what I would think. Just do it again. Step up there, do the exact same thing. Connect the yep. dots. Once again, he needs nine on this ball, nine or better, to advance for the title match. This will be the second time in a row, second week in a row, bowling for a title. But the way he's bowling, the way he's executing, the focus that he's got, that's not surprising. <coughs> that's it right that's there. That's it. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah what an incredible performance. Brad Angelo. That was Getting through Jason Couch. Wow. And I, at, at this rate, I think Parker's got his – he's got his hands full. <laughs> he really does. And, and, you know, Jason Couch, he has ran into some huge games throughout match play. He had a great match play record. But, man, just 260 ain't going to be enough here for Jay Couch. Yeah. And, and that's unfortunate. I know how much this one yeah. would have meant to Jason. How many times does 260 win? Oh. A ton. Yeah, well – when you've got national champions out here on both the PBA regular tour and the 50 tour, this is what you get. What a week for Jason Couch. Obviously, he's on the show. He bowled incredible. But it's it's heartbreaking that, you know, you shoot 260 and you bowled that well all week. Absolutely. And you are going to be packing your equipment because of two pins. Yep. Brad showed up when he needed to. Brad had choice of lane. He wanted to finish the match first, and he did on the left lane. Now Parker's going to have lane choice. Well, I got a clap Sorry. for both these that competitors. Was, that was amazing. That really was. What a great match. 269, 267. They both... What's amazing, they both throw 10 strikes. 
It's just a matter of where you put them. <laughs> this is what a match. And I think Jason giving uh, Parker a little insight on what the lanes are doing, considering they're on the same team. Yes, they are. Who is that down there repping with you guys this week? Who, who, who are you guys? That is Jeff Johnson. Yeah, Jeff Johnson. Okay. I thought I recognized him yeah. down there. Owns a bowling center, uh, 42 lanes, I think, in Freeport, Illinois. Uh, been in the proprietor for quite a while. It was the past president, uh, I think, of uh, BPA in Illinois. Uh, very knowledgeable. Hey, I heard you guys mention that uh, Jason give uh, Parker a little information there, and that's pretty key because Parker down here was saying this practice pair is hooking way more than a TV pair. So he wasn't getting any type of rate of preparation here, just staying loose. So his practice shots here are going to be pretty important. Really important, these practice shots. Thanks, Craig. Well, I think this is the time where I bring it into the booth. Let's frame ourselves up here. And I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you say? Tom you Carter, to Mike me Flanagan here week. with you. <laughs> Who do you got in this title match? Uh, boy, after watching that match, I got to go with Parker. I, I know you do. I, I, I gotta, know you do. I got to go with Parker. I know you got to go with I, Parker. I, I just, uh, you know, he, he's bowled so good all week, and so is Brad. But, you know, I, I just, I think if, if Parker can get the sh right shape, he drilled up a, a new ball uh, and changed the surface on it. I actually think he put a little 800 on it to try to tame that thing down. Uh, I, I got to go with Parker. But, I, you know, Brad is – I know you're going to go with Brad. This is going to well, be – how do you know I'm going with Brad? <laughs> this is going to be, just like last week, 50 and a half to 49 and a half percent. Now, now, last week, though, you said, you said, I got to go with the experience. Yeah. And Parker's got, obviously – more experience. But he Brad does. is bowling really, really well. Brad is bowling really good. Here's the deal. I'm taking Brad tonight. You knew I was going to take Brad tonight <laughs> because I just like the hot hand. I like how he's attacking the lanes. I really don't like the carry down that the urethane balls have created on the left side of the lane. I know Parker's got two balls to use here tonight. Uh, I think Parker deserves the win because he's pretty much been the class of the tournament. He's led almost the entire thing. But I think Brad gets this, this one done here tonight, but I'd be really happy for Parker if he does it. Well, I, I think Parker, if he if he's going to win, he's got to go around it. He's he's he, he can't he's got to use that urethane hold, but he's got to go around the pattern a little bit uh, if he's going to win. Uh, I don't think Brad's going to change what he's doing at all. Uh, why would you? Uh, but uh, like I said, you know you're up one to nothing i am these, right so. now <laughs> craig you got a copy who, who do you like in this match you know uh, it's a tough one for me too as you said parker led pretty much the entire way today but I, I, i'm just going back to early on where we didn't see parker's ball going through the through the pins right away and brad has been pretty much in the same spot all day long just repeating shots i gotta give the edge to brad here okay well, it's two to one let's put it to everybody in the chat who do you have here in this championship match let's hear it at bowl tv let's see who you like here in the chat want to say hello to james andy larry rick john james everybody that's in there hanging out in the chat communicating throughout tonight's event it's been a good one we got our title match coming up brad angelo looking to go back to back take a stranglehold on the points lead right now he will have the lead coming out of here regardless of this match. And, of course, $15,000 on the line. This is our first major of the season here at the PBA 50 Florida Blue Medicare National Championship here at the Village. As we also want to thank Spanish Springs Lanes for hosting us. Again, Larry and Sue Ducat and their son, Brian, 43 PBA tournaments they have now hosted. They are a big supporter of professional bowling, and we certainly do appreciate it. Seeing everybody coming in, Parker, PB3, Parker all the way, rooting for Parker, but I think Brad's going to win. Brad, 250-plus. How about yeah, that? Yeah, might be. Might be 250-plus yeah. for Brad. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Parker's going to need 260 this game. I really do. I mean, the only thing that I, that I could see happen with Brad is because of the spot that he's in, he could start to get a little early hook in the mid lane or maybe even the fronts and the heads. And, and he could start to creep high. We could see a, a four-pin combination, maybe just a four, maybe a four-nine, a, a big four. You know, those sorts of things are still left out there. Well, if he sees that, like you said, he's been seeing it, and obviously he has. If he wins this, it'll be the fifth tournament in a row. He's won. Uh, I think he would move in and do what he did in match play. He he'd might pick that purple ball and try to go around it again, even on his side. Uh, it's As what we've seen in this last match, the lanes didn't change that much for him. I mean, 
you didn't see a whole lot of transition going on for him. So he might not have to move, and if he doesn't have to move, that's going to be this, you, you might have me two to one. <laughs> two to nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just hoping for a good match here. I do think it's going to be important for Parker to get out to a good start. I think he's going to need a good start here. And Parker hasn't thrown. Uh, that's very good right there. I haven't I like seen from urethane go down the lane out of Parker. So no. he, he's, he's thrown two different collisions. Uh Asymmetrical balls, so I think he, he's definitely going to try to go around it. I didn't even see him take a year thing for spares. He just took the two collisions and walked down there. That's it. You know, we talk about Brad uh, with Bull U. Parker, by the end of May, should have the Bone Elite Training Center. Uh, that That's going to be opening up uh, at, by the end of May. That's what he said at Howell Lanes. Uh, so that's going to be something exciting for him, and obviously his boys uh, – We'll have two training centers. Gentlemen, it is time for the championship match. PBA 50, Florida Blue Medicare. Brad 279, Parker 258. championship here at Spanish Springs Lanes. This is what it's all about. Parker Bone coming on. Parker has won 35 times on the PBA Tour. He's a Masters champion, he's a world champion, he's a two-time PBA Tour Player of the Year. He's going for PBA 50 Tour title number seven here at Spanish Springs Lanes. Brad Angelo going for back-to-back -back titles, 15,000 on top for the two players. Let's give him a nice round of applause to start off. Nice going to be a great hey, match. Hey, quick chat down here with Jeff Johnson after he just got done talking with Parker. What was the conversation down there, Jeff? Well, they're they're pretty tight with all the left-handers with the urethane going down. So we, uh, his the one we thought we was going to use, we put a thousand on a deviate collision. Um, it still didn't look that great. So we freshened up the other one. Looks a little bit better. So I think it's back to the old collision that he used yesterday. And I think he's got a pretty good shot at it. No chance of urethane from Parker though. No chance. Didn't bring it over. Okay, so it's going to be uh, the collisions from DV8 for Parker. Brad's going to start the match. Parker had choice. Making Brad start. Okay, so that's yep. what I was talking about. It, it, went, it creeped a little high. It, cre it crept a little high. So what will the adjustment be for Brad? We will have but, to see. Well, he, he's, we'll probably make like, because it wasn't that high, so they'll probably make it like a two-in-one move. I don't think he'll parallel it because he's got to get to that break point. He's got to get to that midsection of the lane that it's actually going to to read. So his feet might move like two. If he moves his eyes one, that, that would be a lot. But I don't think he's going to make a parallel move. Here he is, Parker Bone, the third. Flat seven there. Yeah. And we yeah. talked about it in match play, Tom. But last week, Parker Bone, the third, had an opportunity to make the show. He left a 5-10 Bowling Brad. And Brad had already been locked into the show as the five seed. If he would have beat Parker, he would be the number one seed. He went up in the 10th frame and doubled against Parker to knock Parker out yep. of the show. Otherwise, it would be back-to-back -back weeks for Parker Great as well. That ball never seen the friction on the back end. And, and Parker's got great speed, and that's th that could be his only nemesis on this pattern if his ball doesn't see that box, that window, that hook spot down lane. Yeah, it's like Brad's ball might go a little high. Parker's might go a little light. With the way the lanes are playing right now. Uh, Parker's well, going to like that light mixer yeah, there. That for light sure. mixer. That kind of looked like what Jason was doing, though. You, those light half pocket hits. Yeah. And, and Brad's been kind of flushing them. I, that's a little scary you're trying to live on that. I mean, if half pocket's working, it's working. I mean, there's times that guys line up just to hit half pocket because it carries better. But I'm not so sure that's what Parker's trying to do. Brad taking a little <coughs> extra time here. Bowling for $15,000. Looks like we've got a little chatter here down yeah. in, in the in the bowlers area, and yeah. Brad steps off. That's the first noise that we heard. He's shaking his head. He's a little perturbed about it.
that's how you refocus. Yep. By the way, <laughs> Angelo's already bowled 300 here this week. It wouldn't shock me here. Go ahead and get that out of the way now. In case anybody wants to call me a cloud, go ahead and take care of that right now. Glad you're with us here on Bull TV watching the Step Ladder Finals. Don't forget, we got the PWBA season coming up here in just a few weeks. And of course, we've got 16 PBA 50 events for you here throughout the year right here on Bull TV. And you know why, Tom? Because bowling lives here right here exactly. on Bull TV. Exactly. And we'll be here every week up until the end of August. Yep, just about. We got a little bit of a hiatus there uh, in May, but then we'll be back. Tour takes a couple weeks off. You got to get your motor home out to Vegas. Thank you. <laughs> That's three and a half days. Brad got that. That's been his lane that he hasn't leaked it out on. And that ball got farther right, right there and came in light. He's been keeping it a little bit tighter. So now we have a match. And we certainly do. And that's exactly what Parker wanted to see. No, we got a little bit of a break after Greeley, Colorado. Uh, I think we got like two weeks off before we actually have our next stop in Detroit. The Midwest Swing, we call it, on the PBA 50 Tour. So Brad covers the spare championship match here. Again, I want to give a shout out to Florida Blue Medicare for their sponsorship of this event, the national championship here at the Villages. Classic style of Parker Bone. I, uh, you could probably go back 30 years and watch, and he looks the same. A little fist pump from Parker. Yeah. He's going to need these hits if he's going to take home this title. Looking good so far. Well, yeah. well we, we always take it to the 10th already. So, I mean, we're looking at 290, 279 if it goes all that way. I mean, those scores aren't unheard of because that's all we've seen this afternoon. That, oh, that was a little bit light. <laughs> we talk about half pocket. I don't even know if that made half pocket. That was a good shot by Parker. You got to like that one. The pin action that he's getting. Notice Brad gave him Nux. So we'll see if you are correct and this ball hooks up a little early. If, if he did create a hook spot, is he going to use it? Yeah, there was 10 back last time on this lane. Get a look at where Brad's playing with his feet. Hooked up early again. Way early. Let's take a look at this one more time. Holy cow. And that's the lane he was getting it out to almost like the three board. And that just read too early. So this is definitely a major move or a ball change. And Brad, he's quick with ball changes. I mean, if, if you watched him this week, he, he would change. It. He could have a couple of strikes row and he changed. He well, just didn't like what he's seen. There's a big momentum shift here now in the match with what's happened on Brad's last couple of shots. Now the advantage goes to Parker Bone in a big way. I don't think Brad will switch balls. I think he'll make a, a slight adjustment with his feet. Think he's going to open up the lane? Uh, and when you say open up the lane, uh, I mean maybe cheat a board. Okay. Uh, maybe a one and one left here, potentially. I know the last one came in light, sent it a little bit wide. Just want to make sure he's not too on top of the pattern to see that ball hook through the nose. Let's see what happens here. A little more left to right to yeah. me. Yeah, he, he, he moved it in. He didn't get it out near as far as that last shot. Yep, look at the yeah. shot again. Let's yeah. see how far it goes out. It only went out to look like, what, five? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say five or six. six. Yep. yep, down lane. Yep, we're on the same page. Just 
267 the max for Brad, 290 for Parker. It's going to all come down to pin carry for Parker Bone the third. I don't think he's going to miss the pocket. He just can't hit the urethane spot down lane. <laughs> uh oh, that's out. He come back. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, I think I want to change my pick. <laughs> It's hey, early. Hey, Tom, give us some info here. I'm noticing the ball reps are just kind of staying away from these players during the match. I mean, Brad's got some, some transition going on, but is that standard in the match? You just let the guys go or wait to call it, you up? or what's the, what's the Yeah, other? we wait until they call us up. If they have a question, it, they already got a, a thought process going. Uh, and if you give them too many things to think about, then they could start doubting what they really wanted to do. Uh, most of the time, they'll come over, especially Parker. He'll come over if he's got something – to say or a question to ask. You know, we, what we see up here and behind them is totally different than what they feel out there on the lane. Yeah, it but. certainly is. Good shot here by Parker. Look at that little can yeah, opener. No. Uh, Parker is uh, giving Brad everything that he can handle. Absolutely. Brad will probably cheat in just a little bit here again on this lane as well. Probably similar move to what we just saw on the left lane. Still waiting for the Adrian call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, light mixer. Oh, yeah. I don't think he really cared about that one. He got the, he did play it in, like yeah, you said. Yeah, let's take a look at this one more time. It, up the it, lane. Yeah, it was more up the lane. He didn't get it out as far, but that ball is just looks like it's laboring right there at the back part of the lane. So Brad can still max at 267. A lot of pins left. Brad coming up here in the seventh frame. Brad has missed twice. Parker has missed once. Brad with that unique little hesitation style. It's not as pronounced as it used to be. <clears throat> you can go back and watch some of his TV shows. He was almost at a dead stop. and He actually kind of walks through it now. Yeah, he's just not getting it out to that spot. He, he, he shimmed everything up to the left. I want to give a shout-out to Chris Barnes, bowling 300 the last game of match play. Tony Franklin had a 300 earlier in the week as well. Parker taking a little extra time. You know, Troy Lenton and uh, Tony Franklin might be the two that are competing for the Rookie of the Year this year. Well, I think Tony's going to hit most of the uh, stops, so that's that's big. Oh, oh, the messenger in front of the seven. Parker thought that was dead nuts right there. Yeah, he <laughs> did. <laughs> he, th he thought that was perfect. So now 269, 267 max scores with a spare here. Still a slugfest. That ball just never turned the corner. It just didn't. And uh, Parker liked it and thought it, he was going to messenger, messenger out that seven, but it just never clipped it. Messengers are nice, but I don't think you don't want to count on them. Yeah, no, you, <laughs> you, you don't. Messengers are even that much cooler on the PVA 50 tour. They're just not as fast as the kids tour. <laughs> There's one. Oh, back that, to back that was, shots. That was twice. It was almost identical. Even though he didn't strike, he, look how light he's keeping it. I mean, he's just, he's interacting with people. He's like, he can't believe it either. He's like, <laughs> the pins are too short. Light pocket hits. And he's been mixing them up quite nicely. 
Not on that one or the last. Missing the seven pin with the messenger. Yeah. Okay, right. so now a max score for Parker, 258. 58. Yeah, Brad can go up in the eighth and the ninth here. Take the lead in the match. 267, yep. still the max. Yeah, well, Parker needs, obviously, to strike it out, but we know how well Brad Brad can finish the game. So it's, it's coming down to a – I'm still liking my odds, though. Brad starting outside there, almost out of our camera angle. Yeah, that's how far left he drifts. Yeah. One time, one time. Yes. Oh. There was yeah. a boom right yeah. there. One thing about Brad, and you're, he's asking for a re-rack here, but you watch him and you can go back and watch these shows. Uh, he posts every shot. Yeah. And he's just, he's just dead rock solid yeah. at the line. And I'm going to tell you something. Brad's scary. Like, I walk yeah. around with the microphone and interview guys and stuff, and I almost feel comfortable walking up to everybody. Except but, for but Brad, I never know if I'm going to touch the dial and if it's going to be hot or cold. Because when, he's when he's competing, he doesn't want any distractions. This is, not, this is not a gimmick. This is not a clown show to him. No. This is business. Well, you look at, well, you zoom in on his face when, as he throws it. He, he means business. I mean, he looks mad. And his concentration is is incredible, but you need that. But I, I respect it greatly. Yes. He's going to take some extra time here. He took the re-rack. He knows how important this one is here in the ninth. Well, you know, we said it earlier. You just got to slow down time. Don't don't rush your shot. Make sure, don't throw it until you're ready. And he was ready. He is ready. He's yep. looking mean. <laughs> yeah. Look at that face, I'm telling you. I know. I know. I'm kind of scared. I'm going to inch a little closer to you, bud. Will you hold me? Will you hold me here in the booth? All right. Well, so what's Parker need to do here, Tom? Uh, strike. Okay. <laughs> How about strike out? Yeah, 258. He needs to do that in order to – I mean, Brandon looks like he's locked back in again. So – Parker, unfortunately, had those two sevens that didn't go with messengers that had a bad address. Turn the corner. All right. Now, that didn't look as good as the one he left the messenger on, but he got the break out of that one. Yeah, it didn't look as good, but right, yeah. But I'm impressed with Parker here. I mean, he has hit the one-two every single shot. That's all you can really do. Sometimes it comes down to pin carry. Especially this late in an event when you're bowling against such a high caliber player like Brad. Both players are probably going to hit the pocket every single time. And it just basically boils down to pin carry. And the way you get your ball to go through the pins. Well, that's the big thing, getting the ball to go through and matching up your surfaces. And this game is so technical about ball surface to lane surface. And if those things don't match up, you are you can have the right ball in your hand, wrong surface. And the ball just doesn't read the lane the right way. Parker looking for his seventh. PBA 50 title. Brad, his second. Oh, he flushed that one up. Yeah, big shot there yeah. in the 10th frame for Parker Bone the third as we take a look at it again. Down yeah. through the shot. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was pure money right yeah, there. Yeah, that was 10 back. That was high flush. Call the plumber. Guy was telling me the other day, he said, uh, I'm real good at picking up my spares. I just don't strike. And I said, well, look at the 1-3 as a spare shot all the time. You'll strike more. Oh, there you <laughs> go. That's a nice tip. <laughs> all right, Parker here. The shot will get him in in the 250s. One time. Oh. Was that just a hair high? Just a hair. 247 now the max for Parker Bone the third. Rack and bowl 247. 
Brad just needs the first one in the 10th, I think. Excuse me, 267. Yeah, Brad just needs the first one. I was thinking of how he can get to 247. Yep, Brad will <laughs> need the first hit here. It is confirmed. Surprised he's not using his second re-rack here. Hey, he's definitely taking a little extra We time. got an alarm going off on a phone back here, too. God, I hope not. Yeah, we do. I hope it gets shut off. It's, it's off now. It's a big shot here for Brad. He needs a strike here. Dead quiet in this place. Shots off his hand. It's farther right. Unbelievable. Let's two. take a look at it again. What do you see here? It got it got to the hang zone. It went clear out to two down lane. And you just can't get that Parker Bone. <laughs> it's our champion. I think it almost brought tears to his eyes. Holy cow. What a finish. I hard to believe that that shot happened out of Brad's hand. Two forty seven, two thirty three the, the final uh, score. Parker nevertheless, the great third. matches those last two. So uh, before we hand out all the money and the hardware, I'd like to take one more opportunity to thank the Ducat family for hosting our event here. We sure appreciate it. Uh, Larry has been with the PBA forever and uh, 43 tournaments. That's a long time and uh, a lot of investment in professional bowling. So we sure appreciate it. Thank you, Larry. Uh, thanks to the staff here again and all the volunteers, all the pro-am bowlers. Uh, what a great job everybody did. And uh, we love it here at the Villages. All of you for coming out. Yep, you, you too, Michelle. All of you for coming out. You really make it enjoyable, and um, it's great to have fans in the stands. So, again, congratulations to Parker Bone, and I'm going to turn this over to Larry Ducat to uh, give away some more money. Thank you, Larry. Okay. We were looking at the uh, – oh, I need that one. Two of them. Okay. Two of them. We are looking at the, the, the list of tournament champions we've had in 42 tournaments. And I was surprised we never gave Parker a check before. Uh, so this is the first time you got a check from our family. So, Parker, on, on, on a winner's check, I should say, a, uh, on behalf of myself, my wife Sue, my son Brian, our entire family, and all of our bowling community, congratulations to our national champion. Thank you very much. I get double mic, then the trophy. Yes. What a, what a week. You know, every year we come to the Villages, it's just an incredible week. What you and your family and all your staff do for us right here, and obviously all the fans, it just l sincerely shows from the bottom of their heart into all of our hearts how much bowling is appreciated right here, and what better place to have it than the Villages. So thank you again on behalf of everybody, but I, I also have to send a uh, thank you to to Brunswick, DV8, that collision really, really worked great for me all week, most of the week. Well, okay, maybe not every single game, but <laughs> you know what? I'll take the operator error for some of those shots. But uh, And my wife, I know she's watching. Happy birthday, babe. It was her birthday yesterday, so for everybody out there. I'm going to have my son Brian give you what your wife wants, and that's the check. <laughs> You know, we talked about here with the Hall of Fame, the ambassadors to the game, people that don't get recognized. Here's a guy who is a true ambassador to the game. He's done a lot. We've known him for so many years, and it's a, with great honor that we give you that check for 15000 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wife's not here. I get to keep it this time. Yeah, if Couch would have won, we would have said the first beer's on him. But <laughs> In all these years, my wife never wanted to come up here. So I said, okay, this year... You don't have to talk, but we have the, the, the green jacket, and uh, so she's going to present the green jacket to Parker.
Smith's. I think it was Fitz. made for me. Now we had six sizes, so we guessed. Again, thank you all so much for supporting our tournament. We, we just love doing this for you. So again, thank you. Hey, how about one more round of applause for the Ducat family and all they do for bowling here. Parker, this is the first for me, too. All the chance I've had to talk to all you great champions. Our first time up here. Congratulations. Another win and another major. How's it feel? It feels pretty incredible. You know, any time that you can stand up against the greatest bowlers in the world, regardless of age, okay, and seniority, Anytime you can oust everyone else and still collect the check and trophy, it's really, uh, it's really an amazing feat. Congratulations again to Parker and Brad Angelo on a runner-up this week. Great start to the season, Brad. Next up, Aberdeen. Are you ready for, ready for another week of bowling? I'm ready for another week of bowling. I think we can get things underway, but uh, I, I have to be quite honest. I think everybody that bowled this week needs at least one day off. So tomorrow's a travel day. Everybody can go rest up, and uh, we'll get everything underway starting Sunday again. And that goes for all you fans here, too. We'd love to see you in Aberdeen make the trip up. It's only eight hours, so come on up and see us there. If not, Bowl TV subscriptions are available. Please get online and help support this tour and what we can do to help showcase these great players. Thank you. Well, great job down there by Craig Elliott. What a great scene we have down there. Let's bring it back into the booth to wrap things up. Mike Flanagan, Tom Carter with you. I guess we're tied up one-to-one -one now on yeah, the season. I feel good about that. I really do. I, I feel good about it, too. Yeah, they, what a great show. I mean, Parker, $15,000, uh, and now he's building that uh, Bone Elite Training Center. That Maybe that'll help get that thing started a little faster. Yeah, he even said that, it, that his son Brandon is starting to teach people how to bowl and things like that, and they're starting to really pay it forward. So we're looking forward to seeing what they can put together there. Well, th 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 they're going to be some great coaches because both boys and the girl, all of them, yeah. they throw it fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it must be in the DNA. <laughs> yeah, what, what what a show tonight. I mean, Pete Weber, Jason Couch, Troy Lint, Brad Angelo, Parker Bone the third. I don't yeah. know what we're going to have next week. I, at the rate we're going, I mean, Brad's bowling phenomenal. I mean, yeah. he can make three shows. Parker's obviously on top of his game. It, it's a great venue next week. Uh, I think we could have another Hall of Fame crowd, you know, on the show, which uh, they're fun to watch. You know, I'd like to make it, but I like it being back here too. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I want to see you make a show, at least one show this year, okay? Maybe two, maybe three, <laughs> maybe more, because uh, you know, I want to wrangle up somebody else I'd to sit be, in this booth. I'd be tickled to death with one. <laughs> I want you to make a show this year. Let's make let's make that a goal. I'll rep you next week. How okay, about that? Th there you go. I'll take that. So to everybody at Bull TV, I won't be able to be in the booth. I'm going to be repping this guy on his squad. How about that? <laughs> Well, I hope you have some tricks. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as long as i got a place to stay in the, in the motorcade. So. Oh, I, I, got an extra, I got an extra bed. Not a problem. All right. Well, hey, thanks, everybody, uh, for watching tonight on Bull TV. We sure did give it a go here the last two weeks, and we're going to continue to get even better out here with Brian, with Craig, and with everybody out here that helps. You know, even John Weber and, and your wife, Linda, all you guys are here helping us put on a great production here. So that's going to be it here from uh, the Villages. And uh, we have a few people to thank to be able to make this thing happen. Yeah. First of all, we want to thank, uh, we want to thank, uh, first of all, uh, the, the USBC and the USBC board. We right. want to thank the BPAA and the BPAA board. Uh, we want to thank the, the bowlers for putting on yeah. such a great show. You, the fans, as well. We want to thank the Ducat family that put on a great event here, number 43 total for the family. Right. Spanish right. Springs Lanes here at the Villages coming back. And we want to thank our sponsors, of course, which is Florida Blue Medicare. And uh, we want to thank Larry Sue and Brian, the Ducat family, for, for all their hosting. Because uh, I look forward to being here next year. Yeah, you know, I'm signed up. I'm going to do another Airbnb villa because I love driving the golf cart around here. <laughs> I might even pimp mine out next year. You got one of the souped-up ones? I think so. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. good. It, it does go pretty quick, but I'm going to try to figure out where the governor is and get that <laughs> thing. I'm ready to go back to the future, bud. There you go. All right, well, thanks, thanks everybody, for watching here tonight. Tom Carter, yep. he's the best. And uh, remember, but folks, uh, on Bowl TV. Be here. That's where bowling lives. Bowling lives here, right? Right here. Have a we'll good see night, you next everybody. Week. We'll see you. Hey, the guy in the truck again needs to hit that button. Guy in the truck. <laughs> guy in the truck. Where is he? Oh, there he is.